here we have a 2019 iMac motherboard. It was mailed in here because customer forgot his EFI password. I have not worked on the 2019 model and I do not know if it can be done, if we can reprogram the EFI chip or if the board does in fact have the EFI chip on it or not. But what I'm going to do is look to see if I can locate an EFI chip on this board. For example, on MacBooks 2018, 2019 and above, there is no EFI chip. So we cannot reprogram that chip. So on this one here, we need to locate and see if we can find it. It's usually the wind bond chip. And it should be on this side if there's one. And right there, right there, got it. So the 2019 does have an EFI chip. We do not know how the firmware is like from the inside. Usually what we do is we read from the chip, we locate the $SVS tag within the firmware, we erase it to reset the password, and that's how it's done. We do not know if the programming of this chip is the same, but the chip is the same. This is the wind bond EFI chip. Let's go ahead and remove the chip. We're going to also mark where pin number one is, which is right over here. We can tell by this dot. So pin number one on the EFI chip is on the top left, just like the chip under it, top left. I'm going to be at 470 degrees Celsius on my hot air. The chip is out. And as you see, there's no markings on the pad here where pin number one is. And right now, I do not think you can find any board diagrams for this motherboard. And it will be hard to tell where pin number one is if you did not mark it from the beginning. So what I'm going to do now is solder the EFI chip to this adapter here. And this adapter will plug into the programmer. We cannot put the chip directly onto the programmer, so we must solder it onto this adapter. And this adapter has eight pins on the back that will fit inside the programmer, and then we should be able to read from that chip. So let's solder the chip onto that adapter. And you can find those adapters on our website. Just log into northridgefix.com, click on the shop area of the site, and search for it. The adapter has two templates, one here and one here. This is not the right one. This is the right one, right here. Just a tiny bit of flux. Hot air, I'm gonna put it at 300 degrees because this adapter board does not need a lot of heat. And the adapter board is labeled. So if you look here, you see that it's labeled one, two, three, four. Hello. <laughs> so pin number one here. We're going to plug the programmer onto the computer. Okay. And the programmer is on. We're going to open the programmer's software and read from that chip. And that's the software. Now we're going to detect the chip and click on detect. Which one? We do. Yeah. And for the iPad, it's going to take about four hours because the ceiling takes about two hours and work on it takes about two. Okay. So later today, around four o'clock. Let's read from the chip. Okay, so it's currently reading. Okay, done. 
So now I'm going to save the old firmware and leave it on the side. We're going to open the file in hex editor. And now let's look and see if we can locate the password. SVS. And yes, right there, right there. That's the password right here. We're going to replace it with an empty string. All this is the password up till right over here. We're going to fill selection with FF, which is empty characters. And now we're going to save it. So now we're going to open up the edited firmware. It's opened and now we're going to program it onto the chip. And program. The edited and modified firmware is being programmed onto the chip. Once this job is done, we're going to solder that chip back on the board. And that's it. Customer only mailed in the board. So that's what we're going to do and we're going to mail it back to him. Success. Programming is finished. Now what we're going to do is transfer that chip over to the motherboard. But before we do so, we have to prep those pads. And when I say prep, I mean add solder onto those pads. So the board is ready to accept the chip. Very nice. Now we're going to desolder the chip from the adapter board. Okay, I'm at 250 degrees because it doesn't take a lot of heat to desolder that chip off this one layer adapter board. And pin number one should be on the top left. That's it, we're gonna clean up, invoice the customer and mail it back to him. Customer did not mail in his iMac. This is the 2019 model and we do not have a 2019 model here that we can test this on. But we reprogrammed the chip and password is no longer there. The first time he turns on the machine, he must press and hold command option PR. Press and hold for about 30 seconds and during that process, the computer will restart maybe three, four times, and that will clear the RAM. Now, some people will ask, how do you know that this iMac belonged to that customer? It has a password on it. Maybe this iMac is stolen. That may be the case. I do not know. I have no way of finding out. We are not law enforcement. We are not the police. And it's not our job to investigate. People lose their passwords. It happens all the time. It's not something new. My dad calls me every day. What's my password for this? What's my password for that? Though I do admit, a person with a little knowledge probably will not know how to set an EFI password. But it's not our job to investigate and we do not have the right to investigate. If the customer tells you, yeah, this is mine, how can you find out? Do you can ask for a receipt? No, you can't ask for a receipt. The customer is mailing in a 2011 MacBook to remove the password. He's not going to have no receipt. So we cannot go by that rule and I don't think that we have the right to go by that rule. Now what we did is we reprogrammed the EFI chip and that's it, job is done. Chip is right over here. 
I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions, and we'll do something else in the next video.